right, I'm going to test volume in chat, and then I'm going to go ahead and kick off. Chat looks good. Good enough. All right, who have I got in the stream? Is there anybody that can put name in the chat? There's only a, only a couple of us right now. Oh, scared somebody away. Maybe that was me on my phone. Delilah, thank you. Delilah, would you mind? So we had a milestone yesterday <coughs> on the channel. We had our first troll jump into the comments and uh, start making remarks. Uh, this is not the place for that. Um, so I need to make somebody or somebody's moderators so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and you can see if anything pops up that you're like, this this person doesn't belong. Um, you can just mute them or hide them or whatever you do. So Delilah, are you okay with me making you a moderator for this? stream. And I think you'll actually, if I make you a moderator for this stream, you'll be a, an approved moderator on all my streams that you happen to be on. So I'll just make, you know, I can make several people moderators. Just let me know in the chat if you're, if you are willing to, to moderate. I don't anticipate problems with students from the class. It's the odd person from out in the wild blue that stumbles upon us and decides it's going to be funny to start writing stuff. All right, so yesterday, um, yeah, let me do that. Okay, then Delilah. All right, now Delilah, when you make a comment now, there should be a little wrench next to your name in blue, meaning you are moderator in charge. Um, all right, so yesterday, if you caught the live stream yesterday, we talked about light and shadow. And it's kind of the last piece of the puzzle in rendering out the entire figure is learning to differentiate. So not the piece we just finished, not yesterday, but we had done the week before with the light shapes was really about dividing light and shadow and being able to see them separately um, and to keep them separate from each other. Then yesterday we talked about full value or light logic uh, also called chiaroscuro. All of those things mean the same thing, which is that you're looking at all parts of light and shadow, right? You're looking, uh, all of that terminology, that PDF, that stuff we talked about last time, yesterday, uh, is now open for consideration. That's highlight, direct light, half tone, sometimes called mid-tone, core shadow, reflected light, cast shadow. You're thinking about all of those and how they kind of present, what they're like in an image, uh, and more particularly what they're like in real life, like the way light behaves and understanding and capitalizing on that in your drawing. All right, so to that, to that effect, the sort of the arc of the drawing we're going to be doing today is going to be, um, we will start with a gesture as usual, we will work through structure and measuring and proportions and anatomical considerations and stuff like that. Uh, when we're comfortable with that block in drawing, we'll identify the light shadow edge. We'll fill the shadow with a passive value. And then we will start working those other values in uh, that we talked about yesterday from that whole PDF. So there's kind of a step by step by step to this drawing process. 
uh, that hopefully we have built up to to this point so you feel reasonably confident moving through gesture into structure and measuring and all of that stuff yeah, towards shadow and light and then into like the full render as kind of an art, uh, a path that you're going to take in the drawing. That will give you something. So it, before where a two hour drawing was like, that's just too long. I get two hours. That's way too long. Now it may not seem long enough. And you can go down this rabbit hole till you're doing 50 hour drawings. I can point you to people who do such drawings. Um, for now, we're going to sort of time ourselves for a couple of hours, a couple hours worth of drawing. One figure is plenty to deal with in that time. Um, there's a lot, a lot to consider. So without further ado, I'm going to kick off. I am going to keep, so I'll just level with you or we'll just talk about what, what I'm going to use for this drawing. Um, I'm going to start with vine charcoal in the gesture. And I'm gonna to try to activate the page and sort of work that vine charcoal around on the page like we did yesterday so that I can, uh, so that I have a basis that's not just flat white paper to work from later. So the work I do at start with the vine is gonna help me later, as well as give me the opportunity to change um, stuff as, as I want to. Uh, I will probably do the drawing itself. So the, the straight line block in that sort of phase of the drawing. Uh, I'll be using charcoal pencils for that. This is the carbon pencil. This is a medium charcoal pencil. Later, if I find I may not take uh, the vine charcoal to the full value stage, I may not shade the full drawing in vine charcoal. I might use this is compressed charcoal. This is a 2B stick. This is I think a 6B stick or maybe a 4B. So these are my compressed charcoals. And remember from yesterday, these are quite dark. These will go very, very dark. And then of course, I'm gonna have my kneaded eraser. So, and I'm doing today's drawing on white paper. Next week, we are stepping back from value a little bit. We're gonna go into anatomy next week. Week after that, we are going, and I mentioned this yesterday, I'm gonna mention it again today. We are going into rendering light and shadow with the sticks, either the light and dark new pastel, the light and dark Conte. That's gonna work way better on gray paper. So if you have gray paper, great. If you don't have gray paper, Allard's I believe is still doing curbside orders. So you can order online or call in your order and then go pick it up curbside at Allard's if you wanna get that gray paper. You can still do this approach, this full value approach on white paper with the sticks, it's just a little more work uh, and it's not, you don't have the satisfaction of, of experiencing the gray paper, which if you ask the intermediate students, gray paper is a game changer. It's really it, that toned paper, it doesn't have to be gray even, it could be blue or green or whatever. It really gives you a good starting point so that you're not starting just from this fresh, pristine white piece of paper. All right, so we see the reference up above. Uh, that should be nested inside the assignment in Canvas as well. Um, I will put another one in there. I'm not gonna do another live stream drawing uh, from photo reference, but I'll put another reference in there so you still have the two options to work from. This one is in there now. The other one I'll put in either today or tomorrow. All right, so I'm just gonna kick off the gesture here. And as always, feel free to ask questions in the chat. This is an open pose to me, but it's kind of closed in that. I can see a big shape. And I've made that a little bit too steep. I think this overall shape is much shallower. Now I need to ask myself a question right now with this drawing. Do I want to draw the entirety of the figure all the way out to the hands? like including the hands and down this fabric post thing? Or do I want to focus in on like maybe elbow to knee and blow this drawing up? Now I did this drawing with the intermediate students in color and I blew it up and kind of just focused on the torso. Now is the time to decide 
what am I going to, how much of this model am I going to draw? If I draw the whole model on the page, it's going to be some fine, some small work in the values. That maybe that's fine, and maybe I will go for that. Um, but now's the time to decide when we're like 10 seconds in. And again, this vine charcoal, oh, you know what? Sorry, folks, let me do something real quick before we get any further. Nope, that's not right. Oh, my apologies. I'm working on the image I'm working from is one direction. I flipped it the other direction so I get out of your way so that the chat starts kicking up over here. You can still see the drawing over here. Anyway, forgive me. I'm good. <laughs> still getting things figured out. All right, so I'm just going to work from the hip here. My aim here is to get the get the figure in in this gestural way, but I'm also filling I'm trying to fill up the page with sort of marks because I want that value. I want that uh, I want the vine charcoal to fill up the page a little bit. Looks like I might be running this leg off the page, but that doesn't bother me too much. I think I'm going to go ahead and let it do that. Blast that one away. Right. And that's not, I haven't lost much. I still have that gesture down, um, but that has fogged out some of that vine charcoal onto the page. I want that. That's what I'm going to, I'm going to take advantage of that later. Maybe get a little bit more. So that last one is maybe like a one, two minute type gesture. I'm going to get a little bit more involved in this one. Planted. This is kind of a C curve with a little bit of S there at the end. Why a strong overlap? I can already tell I'm getting a little bit out of whack with the knees 
I'll catch that in the in the measuring stage. I see it now, so I might as well deal with it now, but this one I feel like these maybe are not long enough like I've got that thing happening here where you, you sense the end of the page coming and so you try to cram your stuff on to make it fit and you end up with too short there, right? So and I'm seeing that in the gesture stage. Right now, I'm not, about, I'm not correcting it really yet. I'm, I'm asking myself, do I feel that sense of sort of resting push in this? Do I have the, the flow of the pose working? And right now I kind of do. There are proportional issues, but I feel decent about the way the gesture is sitting on the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stick with that as a gesture. I've ghosted it a couple of times. So I've got some smear of vine charcoal down on the page that I know I can use later. I'm gonna set my vine aside for now. I'm not gonna do more drawing with the vine because I don't want this to be a vine charcoal entirely drawing. And the more, as we saw yesterday as well, the heavier the vine charcoal goes down, the weirder it is when you start using compressed charcoal or other things on top of it. I can bring the vine back to smooth out texture really quite effectively. But for now, I'm putting it to the side while I get some, more, some better decisions laid out in this pencil. And I think I'm going to grab a longer pencil as well. Actually, I'm going to make use of this little pencil extender. It's going to give me a better grip on this pencil and the ability to measure with it. All right, so I'm going to take some measurements real quick. Um, the first thing I want to do is just, I'm going to take some overall, some big measurements. Like I'm going to measure like head to toe, like the distance here. And I might just have to move my implement over and go down to where the toe is kind of at. I'm not going to measure across ways like this really. I'm just going to go highest down to the ground like that. And I'm going to turn it sideways and just see how it relates. Um, I don't really need to do a bunch of counting. I'm just going to kind of see what what happens maybe running off of this i'm going to use this as a landmark so like an anchor point all right so when i do that and here i'm kind of swinging the pencil side to side so uh this is what i do when i can't go i don't want to measure like this but when i measure straight down from like the top of the head for instance it's just nothingness i can imagine where that is or I can swing it, I'll try like this. So I move my finger to where the toe is and then I just swing back and forth just to make sure the top of the pencil is lining up with the head and my fingers are lining up with the foot, right? So I do that kind of swing, just a little back and forth one just to make sure it, this makes me a little, little more accurate. And when I turn that sideways, uh, that's basically hip to a little past elbow. All right, so when I went like this and turned it sideways, it was like hip to a little past elbow. I'm too close to my drawing. My measuring stick's not long enough, so I'm going to scoot back just a tad and just take that measurement as well. So there is foot to head, hip to a decent ways past elbow. I've got this just a tad tall but it's just a tad. So I have to ask myself, eh, how do I, do I want to start shifting things? And if so, what? 
maybe maybe this could go a little bit further out and that would make up the difference because I was about to to there and it needs to be a little farther in front of the elbow. So I need to stretch this way just a tad. And I know my tendency is to compress models and so I think I am gonna, I'm gonna exaggerate that stretch probably out here in the elbow. Um, I could also scoot this stuff over if I wanted to. And then I'm gonna watch out for making this area too thick because I tend to do that as well. So I've, I've given myself just a little cue to move that elbow forward. Right? And then I feel reasonable about what's going on, at least in this section, as far as overall height versus width. All right, I'm going to take another measurement. I'm going to deal with this arm right now. And again, I haven't started making any lines yet. I'm just kind of getting a, a grip on my measurements first. Um, I'm going to take this arm probably from knuckles to the back of the shoulder here, that shadow where if I'm speaking anatomically, it's where the teres major would be starting to flow forward into the armpit. I'm going to take that and just compare it to the body and just see, see what I get. So if I take that measurement on screen, ter so knuckles to teres major, go to teres major, it puts me back, it puts me way over here. All right, so once again, I'm going to scoot back. And go knuckles to Terry's major. Yeah, so I've got those arm. I've got the. I've got the arm compressed here. So they should these knuckles be off the page pretty much. That's if this leg. Is correct, which it's pretty close. All right, so that's further evidence that this stuff needs to go forward. And at this point, I can be like, well, I don't want to lose the hands. I want to get the hands in there, at which point I need to re-gesture smaller, uh, shift things around, make the figure smaller. I think I'm going to let the arms run off. I'm going to focus my attention, given the time frame, I'm going to focus my attention torso, leg, area, and maybe to the elbow and let the arm run off. All right, just as a quick note, what's the body width like? I take that body width, it is roughly the same as thigh. It's roughly the same as that. So I'm a little bit thick in the body as well. I'm going to keep an eye on that. All right, I'm going to start putting my contour line drawing in here. And I'm straight line blocking this so I can make Good decisions. Good structural anatomical decisions. And it's usually a good idea with male models to, you can kind of exaggerate the, the block in. The straightness of the lines, it makes them feel a little more, I don't know, carved, I guess. So we have this tendon, that's the t tendon of the TFL, or no, I mean, sorry, that's the hamstrings. So that's the tendon of the hamstrings. The tendon of the TFL is just up from that right here, this second line. All right, and I'll catch that one. I don't need a contour for that one because it's just a shadow shape. I'll catch that one in the shadows, but this one is a strong overlap. So I'm going to make sure and get that one with its little that other contour in the background as well. All right, I'm gonna be careful with the zigzag here. I want a gentle, a nice gentle zigzag. So that I'm not, I don't want to overstate like this. If I if I make those angles too angular, if they should be gentle, but I make them too angular, it'll start feeling really chunky. Gets out, and then there's almost a, it's almost like that straight line down the front of that leg. Then it juts down. 
straight out from the top of the leg. There's a little overlap right there. Down the patella, it sits right out here on the front, and then there's tibial tuberosity right there, and it juts just underneath that, juts right back in. There's a tiny little angle break there. And I'm just going to be real basic with the foot for now. I don't want to get, I don't want to get caught up. in the foot. The toes, the end of the toes, if I go straight up, are, are just underneath the tuberosity there, so that's as long as the foot is. I can dress that out later, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. There is a really strong line here. There's a strong shadow shape there, so I'm just going to remind myself about it. So this straight line block in still, it's very, I don't want to say generic, but it's kind of, it's just the broad strokes. Though you can see it's getting some structural detail going on. Um, it's just the broad strokes for now. And then I can come back into any of these areas later and, and really punch up the detail. I got to be careful with this so that I don't make it too wide. Because my brain knows, okay, the rear there, they're both, you know, both sides are the same size. And so it's going to want this to be wider than it really is. If you need to, you can measure and see just how tiny it is compared to this side. Uh, a common thing I see is to make this part really large unnecessarily. It's quite a, it's a very thin sliver, to be honest. All right, and I'm gonna do a trick. I don't wanna say it's a trick, but let's see that knee, that's right through there. So I'm a little bit low on the knee. Um, but I'm gonna do a thing and emphasizing, oh, why not is this? I'm just gonna call it a trick. This is the back leg and it's in light. Like there's the, especially the bottom part of it is catching light but it's the back leg. So what I can do when I'm rendering this out, I can give full value consideration to this front leg and I can kind of just silhouette this back leg and what it will do, it'll add atmosphere and kind of dimension to the figure. So maybe this back arm and the head take a back seat, which they are kind of doing already in the image. And this back leg also takes a back seat. We'll see that once I get to rendering. That's on my mind right now, but I'll deal with it later when we get to the, the render. This is, I'm going to break my own rule and just put an arc there. Just because of how arky that back feels right there. I'm going to measure the legs real quick, actually, this width versus that width, just to see. I'm feeling like this back leg I've got just a bit too wide, so I'm going to double check that. If I take the thigh of the front leg, yeah, if I take the thigh of the back leg, it's, it's like this. So I do have it too wide. So the question is, where do I pull the width out? Where do I take the width out of that leg? Um, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to split the difference. So thin that up a little bit. This becomes a throwaway line, which I can either later disappear into the background. I could erase if I wanted to just top off that line a little bit, but I'm just going to leave it for now as evidence of the drawing process.
So now this is my new leg width. That's much more in line with what I was seeing up there. So these, I'm gonna let these mistake lines become unimportant later. All right, I've got some anatomy here, so I wanna make sure I get this. I imagine the top of this bump facing up. It's like the, there's a little cluster of muscles up here. I just wanna make sure and get. Down, up and down. I'm imagining this part facing up, like rounding up like that and then rounding up again. So I've got a contour on the top of that shelf right there. And then just up from that, I have another contour because there's another, it's like rounds up, there's a top rounds up again, there's another top. Okay, and then that dives in there. All right, I'm gonna take a quick measurement just from here where the shoulder muscle dips into the back of this and just compare it to something else to kind of get a size situation. It is the same as the width of the body. Mm, I don't have the width of the body where I trust it just yet. So I'm gonna take some other measurement that I do trust a little more and say, oh, it's slightly, it's like that. That's pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna use that as basis for the thickness of the body. This is subject to change, but I think it's, I think we're, we're in a reasonable, in a reasonable state. I'm not going to do those ab muscles just yet. I'm just going to reduce them to a straight line. Which comes out, where does this, it's somewhere along here, it breaks angle a couple of times, like it goes a little bit flatter. And then it starts heading, slanting up. And it slants up towards right in front of this shoulder muscle right there on the arm so kind of like that now is that the angle is that angle correct no i've got it too steep which means that starts back just a little bit straight down from this. There's a dark shadow shape right here that also is where latissimus dorsi, teres major, that arm is kind of differentiating. It's kind of branching out from the body starting right at that thin shadow section. A little bit of the neck, I swear I can see there. A little bit of the back section there. Nipple right here. I gotta be careful that this doesn't go too far away from the edge, because when I look, it's really it's really, it's not even the same distance. I even have it a little high right here. It's almost like it could be just a little lower. There's that part of that chest and the center line. It's in like that. I'm just going to give myself some hints of what's to come. There's like a range, there's like an angle of shadow 
this way. This is that latissimus dorsi kind of serratus anterior area. I'm not going to get real specific with it though. That's just to kind of give me cues as to what I'm going to do later anatomically. Right, this is where I had the forearm before, but I'm already, I'm seeing that that's just not correct. It's going to be much further out. So how much further out? I'm going to do a quick measurement. So from this point to the peak of the forearm, what is that like? What else is that size? It's exactly the width of this leg. So if I trust this leg, then I know that the peak of my forearm is going to be that distance, same as that distance. All right, so that's peak of forearm. And it looks like it goes almost, it's just shy of horizontal here. Short down trip. There's like a dip and a dip back up. Make sure and get that. Straight down from that is where this elbow is. This is the olecranon, this sort of cluster here. And you can kind of see the little zigzag of the divot we talked about when we talked about the arm just up there as well. It's catching light. It's pretty subtle here. The olecranon is much clearer. Here's the tendon of the triceps. There's part of the triceps. It dips down like this. It heads back up. of the forearm here. Probably a little too much on that dip down. If I look at it, I made it just a little bit too, too big. All right, and I'm going to let the hand sort of bleed off that side. Oh, y'all can't see. All right, head comes and I'm just going to reduce the head to some really basic shapes. Let's see. So it's just back from this peak of the forearm. That's where the head starts. So I was already on the wrong track there. Up and it comes back down into that shoulder muscle, that deltoideus. If I follow this straight down, there's where the chin, this is not perfectly vertical. So the chin doesn't start perfectly vertical from where that head intersects. It's kind of tilted back at an angle. So I want to make sure and preserve that. It's a relatively short trip. This head's going to be entirely in shadow, but it's going to be a good opportunity to show off a sort of silhouette. So just going to get the angle of the nose in. A little bit of the forehead. We'll call that good. That's a throwaway line. That's a throwaway line. There's some arm in the background. I'm going to play the same trick with that arm as I do with this leg, which is to kind of fade them into the background with some gentle, gentle value. I'm not going to give them as much contrast as this front stuff is going to get. Carry that on just a little bit further. All right, so right now I need to ask myself, is there anything weird is there anything that's not, that I don't like proportion wise that needs to get fixed? If I'm at this stage, I'm about to start going into light and shadow. It's the last time that I can do, that I can make changes like that without incurring a bunch 
more work. All right, so for the sake of time, let's see, we've got about 45 minutes left. Um, we're about halfway through, dang. You can see the time that I'm spending putting this together. Take all the time you need. It's better to take more time at this stage. I will tell you this, your shading, your value application is a lot easier or just happens, it goes a lot smoother when you've taken the time to do this part. When you've given them the proportions the correct amount of attention. Here I'm going to get in and get these ab shapes. Careful not to let it grow too much. Again, this is another place where my brain knows that that's the front of something and that it's wide. And so the tendency to draw these down lower to show more of them is, increases. So I need to make sure that it stays quite thin in that area. I'm just adding some of this contour. Was a straight line before. Now it's gonna take on some of that ab, abdominal, rectus abdominis nature. Right, and I'm going to start putting in shadow shapes now as well. Let's see, nipples perfectly vertical, maybe even slightly forward from there. So I've got this a little bit out. This is something I am just going to pop into unimportance with my eraser and restate it forwards a tad. This comes back to about there. All right, so shadow shape. This has like a, like three peaks going this way. That's latissimus dorsi, teres major, and triceps. Especially that triceps is really nice. It's got that cast shadow right there. Then we have a cast shadow here onto it, right against, that's a really high moment of contrast, so that's nice to have. Heads back up a little bit and down. I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in as I go, just with a light pass. Shadow out in the elbow, little shape there. There's a little overlap up here I don't like. I'm gonna chase it away just to, felt like it was cutting into the arm just a little too much. Ooh, there's a shadow shape up here. I'm gonna ease this bump just a little bit. Shadow shape there. The rest of this is kind of light. It's starting to head into shadow right here, but it's kind of still in the light. So I'll deal with that when I get to the dealing with the light. Shadow shape here goes down and forwards. Straight down like this. This is where, so if there's a dangerous spot in this drawing, it's coming up. It's going to be this area through here. I'm going to be really tempted to go, oh man, look at all those shadows and, and draw a million shadow shapes in. Uh, I need to do some editing there. I want to show off anatomy. I want to show off musculature and form. 
I don't want to get caught in the nuances of every single little dark shape trying to get them all in perfectly. So I'm going to start with the big stuff first. I see that these have a little light shape to them, like these, this part of the abs, but it's the back, they're the other abs, like the back ones. So I'm actually going to get rid of them. I'm just gonna push them into shadow artificially for now. I can bring them back, pop out a few little light shapes with my eraser later if I decide I need to. For now, I'm getting some of these bigger shadow shapes. This one is really important. This little triangle, so there's whole area here, rather than a million little shapes, from just back from the nipple and up, there's kind of a triangle situation. right through there. And I'm following this line that I put earlier, sort of that wraps up around to the back as my guiding, my guiding line here. We're kind of, I'm kind of in the light now, so I'm not really giving these shapes the, the clarity that these darker shadow shapes have for now. Again, I'm not gonna do every single one. I'm not gonna do a bunch. Just a few little arcs in will do that'll make it feel like that without getting skeletal. You know, the clearer I make these shapes, especially those ribs, the more emaciated or skeletal or, or strange the figure is going to feel. All right, now for this shadow shape. This one's doing a lot of work in describing the form. That little shadow is caused by the TFL muscle. You can see ASIS up here. There's like a light. There's like a bump right through here. That's that TFL. And then it's kind of a straight shot right here down to this nice dark shadow shape there. Gets a little indistinct, but then it's sharp again right there. Down like that. This arcs back. Then back up here. This is gastrocnemius right there. And this shadow that jumps up here is fibularis. So it's in, let me double check that. Nope, that's soleus. So it's gastrocnemius here, soleus here. Feathers in like that with one last little hit on its way down. And there's a nice strong shadow right here and along the back of that foot. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in. Back up off my pencil a little bit makes it easier to fill these shapes in carefully. Right, and this is where I'm going to take this leg and just, instead of 
thinking about the light shapes, I'm going to fill it in with the, the light shapes. I don't get them till about the knee and down in the calf and foot. And because that's already going to be going off my page, I'm just going to kind of let it drop off. Go ahead and show my hand down here, like let my pencil marks exist. So I'm going to leave that leg kind of like that while I work the rest of the values. I might even give this just kind of a smoothing light smear. It doesn't look like it's doing much, but in, in my real life example, it's giving me, there's all the charcoal on my hand, it's giving me just a little bit of a little bit of smoothing. All right, so that's about as far as we went to previously. Um, in our shadow shapes, maybe minus the smearing, now we're gonna work into the light shapes and work transitions. And what I'm gonna be paying attention to here, that sort of, since I've put my, val my value down in my shadow shapes already, since I've smeared into the light already, the work that I'm doing right now moving forward is going to consist largely of strengthening core shadow where I find it. So right after we go from light into shadow, strengthening that core shadow wherever I find it. Adjusting light shapes with eraser. So I'm going to be drawing the light shapes kind of like the white shapes on black paper. I'm going to be doing that with my eraser into the lights and probably you know working back and forth, back and forth there. And then softening edges. Where I see a hard edge, I'm gonna make a hard edge happen. Where I see a soft edge, I'm gonna make sure that edge is soft. And that'll pretty much get me there as long as I don't, if I darken, if I add value to the light area, then I'm gonna have to add value to the shadows and that may happen. Um, what I'm not going to do, and this is a point to remember, if there's nothing else this whole, uh, session long that you remember, please let it be this. Uh, do not erase out anything that's in the shadows. You put down your shadow pass, that's to divide it from the light. Then if you need something to show up light in the shadows, like I see around this gluteus maximus muscle here, it seems to be glowing in the drawing, like there's some light hitting it. I do not want to come in with my eraser and erase out that light. It's gonna make it far too light in value and it's gonna look like it belongs out in the light. Instead, I'm going to just darken the things that are around it. So I'll, do, I'll start there as an example of, of what I'm talking about. So if I look at that area, I know I can, all I'm doing is darkening. I know I'm not erasing anything. So I know this to the left of it can darken. All right, that's already lightening things up. I don't want to go too much further on that leg because I don't want to render that whole leg out, as I said before. All right, so now I've got this. This is a lot lighter than what's next to it. Um, I'm going to go in and strengthen the core shadow here. As well as soften this edge in some places. So by softening the edge, I'm just really lightly letting my charcoal go back and forth over that shadow edge, just quite lightly. But there's a little bit of reflected light there as well, so this kind of darkens a little bit again. If I want to, I can smear this to sort of incorporate it. Um, I can bring vine charcoal back to do that work. So if I bring vine charcoal into this core shadow, it will smooth things out quite a lot. So keep, keep your vine charcoal around if you find that your core shadow is just too textural and you want it to smooth. Vine charcoal is a good way to do that without darkening things too much. But I'm gonna keep working this. 
my marks are kind of going back and forth. So in this leg, I'm going to let my marks go this way, sort of across the leg. And especially if I can get them to be just a little bit round, they'll all, they'll show off the roundness of that leg a lot. If I go like this a bunch, if I do all my shading along the leg like this, it's going to look too scratchy, hasty. It's not going to be very satisfying to look at. Because the leg is round, so any textural stuff, anything is going to exist on this cylindrical form. Might as well put that in as part of your drawing. Or mimic that in the drawing, I guess is the way to say it. All right, here we have this is round, the bump is rounding over and then it rounds again. So I see some reflected light. So like right under this shadow, there's this dark area. And then there's core shadow up above it. It's going to give me a little bit of reflected light there. And it may not seem important, but it is. It's This is where your form, this is where your three-dimensionality in rendering comes from. It's making sense of what you are, um, what the light and shadow is doing, what part of light and shadow you're currently drawing. Right. So right now I know I'm working on core shadow. And what I do with it is informed by that. It's cast shadow. It's got a hard edge here and a hard edge there. And then a soft edge on the front. And this is what I talked about yesterday, and I'll grab it now. If you have a blending stump like this, you can use it. So in this area right here, I notice, okay, I'll bring it closer. This, this part of that is headed into the light. So that shadow shape needs to be soft on this edge and hard down here and here where it's kind of a cast shadow. So I can take this blending stump and just soften that edge. And I can particularly soften it towards the light. And you can see how much that softened that edge. If you're using your blending stump for, for softening edges like that, it's really quite a powerful tool and really quite a helpful tool. If you're using it to indiscriminately blur every line and to just kind of go heavy handed everywhere, it's a little too much and it can be kind of distracting. So I will say they're not necessary. Like I can get a similar effect with my finger. But they can be way more precise than a finger. quite dark in there. I'm going to bring this contour back just a little bit. Felt like it was getting a little bit lost there. Shadow shape here. This is quite a soft edge here.
just a hint at what's happening in the toes there. They kind of stack forwards, like you have pinky toe, next toe, next toe, next toe. They're in perspective, so the distance between them gets a little bit closer together, especially right underneath the big toe there. And then a nice little finish off for a toe is to just kick that big toe up a little bit. Might have been a little too much, but that'll give you a feel of that that big toe hiding behind the other ones. Heck, I might throw some cast shadow here. I'm not gonna let it be too important though. Just a little something to ground a foot. All right, don't want to get sucked into that too much. <clears throat> Part of this process can also be using your eraser to dress some of these shapes out. So I'll do that here in just a minute. So right now I'm kind of describing everything by adjusting the shadow edge and it's starting to give dimension to things. But I can really get a lot of like working that half tone, working the highlights and stuff with my eraser, finding sharp edges as well. Um, that's something I can do relatively easily with my eraser. So I'll head into doing that here in just a second. A little bit of shadow there. It's almost like I have this slab here. There's like a slab here, a slab there that kind of peeks up into this arm and then just that really bright spot there. So I'm kind of thinking of those two slabs at least right now. So not quite a dark enough to be a shadow shape, but some of these some of these muscles are sweeping forward into the armpit. I'm gonna get those. That's got some nice flow to it. Just chill those out a bit. All right, let me get my let me get my eraser in here just to pull out. As soon as I say that, I start going, oh wait, I'm going to get this, strengthen that core shadow first. Bring this light back. You'll start to see the effect this will have. Chill out those lines from the gesture just a little bit. I'm going to take that a little too far right there and then just chase it back a little bit. a little too far, chase it back. There's a nice little hard edge moment right down in here. I'm going to get that just as, just to highlight that little 
area and it's right here. There's like this little angular thing. Your white eraser can get in there a little more cleanly than this one, but just a little angle there and up. I'm thinking about the light coming from this direction. So it's like hitting and then falling off. So it's like a hard edge here. Put that a little closer. It's like a hard edge here, then it drops off slowly, and then it's going to be a hard edge again right there after that shadow. So I'm going to keep that a couple of keep that up a couple of times. There's another hard edge, and it drops slowly off this way. And heck, we'll do a final hard edge. Maybe not final, just another hard edge drops off that way. And we have that nice light wrinkle and there's quite a hard edge there. I'm going to chase that back just a little bit and I'm going to bring this hard edge into focus. And then the front of the leg also has its hard edge, so I'm going to make sure get that in. Chase it back just a tad. It's a light spot here. I'm kind of making the light spot and chasing it back so that I still have room. I don't want to go all the way back to white paper except for in the lightest, lightest areas where there's highlight. And it's quite light here at this leg, but I'm still going to save myself just a little bit of room there. Again, I'm using my eraser to firm up, to make hard edges where I see them. And to adjust those shapes in the light. Let's come up in here and get some. Right there, I really like that little cast shadow moment. In the tricep, that really has a nice feel to it. And it continues up here like that, but maybe not as strong. Another little bit right there. I think I want to show off this thing being round, like the difference where it juts into the body and comes out. So I'm going to play up this little bit here. just to show that rounding into the body. It's a bit of an exaggeration on what I see up there already. It's a little too much right there. This is all just medium charcoal pencil for now. I have to ask myself, how much of the ribs, how much of this rib situation do I really need? Because as I said before, I really don't want it to get too out of control. Let's come back up here. I have a light shape on this bump back here. And another one right behind it. I 
have a nice shine down that deltoideus. And it kind of spreads out. We have just a moment, like the back of the deltoideus muscle here, as it separates from Terry's major. I'm gonna darken that just a little bit more. Just to give it some, some oomph. I notice a light shape on the tricep right middle of the head. It's like here. And then it blurs down. It's kind of like the shelf of that tricep. That should be back just a little bit. It's like this tricep is bulging outwards. There's that light shape. So it's hitting almost everything it hits, it hits and rolls off. So a light hits here, rolls off into shadow, hits there, rolls off into shadow, hits, roll, roll, hits, rolls off into shadow back here. I kind of distorted here in the image, but I'm using that as sort of my guiding principle for what to do with these light shapes that I'm seeing. And I think I'm going to pop in some elbow detail, but then I'm going to let this kind of drop off because I really don't want to draw attention up here because I'm not focusing on it so much. But I do like that elbow and I particularly like this. It's like a strong light shape right there. It's going to give me just dealing with some of that elbow stuff is going to give me some structure at the elbow. And that's about the last spot that I'm going to It's like the last little moment of focus before this thing falls apart towards the edge of the page. And I can encourage that idea further by just... That's not even happening in the reference image. That's just saying, as you come this way, nothing to see here. And I can encourage with using some of that shape, what the model's holding on to. That same idea. This is just kind of saying, hey, go back into the model. Because this is kind of, this is wanting to push us off the page. If I come, if I add some design element this way, it'll just help things feel a little more contained still. All right, so if your drawing goes to this stage, to this state, that's totally fine. This is about like some good light shadow modeling and dimension. Sort of pick up on things that may seem unresolved to me, but in the time frame that I'm giving you, well, I guess you could spend as long as you like on these, but if you think about like how long a, a class is, a couple of hours. By the way, I've been working with this pencil for pretty much the whole time and it's still relatively sharp. I can still find a sharp edge on it. So I haven't been 
dulling the point. If you dull the point on this, it's gonna be, you'll have to keep sharpening your pencil to get the sensitivity out of it. And if I really wanted it to be sensitive right now, I'd go sharpen it. Like if I really wanted to get in and do some fine work here, uh, I'd go sharpen it because it's, it is, even though it's not totally dull, it is kind of dull at this point. I'm just gonna get the silhouette of this face in just cause I don't know, it's kind of nice to look at. So I'm just gonna, I don't want it to be important, so I'm not gonna go in and shade it. I would encourage you also to not shade it. I'm just gonna use it as, I don't know, a bit of context, a bit of accent, right? It's got, it feels like a face now. If I wanna bring my eraser in, I could get even more Right, I can draw attention to that face just by contrast alone. Come in and give him, I don't know, medieval halo effect. A little less, a little less important. give a little bit of highlight here. This is where gray paper really shines because you can be super sensitive with your with your white pencil and putting in light shapes and highlights and all of that. well we got about 10 minutes left there's some structure down at the knee I want to I want to deal with there's like right through here there's a dark shape that comes down in and it's like the it's the front of this muscle down to where it connects, there's like a, a rounding over, followed by a light shape. There's a little tube of light right through there. So I'm gonna pick that stuff up just to structure out that knee just a little bit more. Lighten this value a little bit. Yeah, that's giving me some structure at the knee. That's nice. Some light on the front of that soleus and a little bit up here. Ooh, and the head of the fibula has some light. So I'm gonna chase those muscles back just a little bit. I'm gonna highlight that bone. Or like bring it into focus by adding just a bit of shadow on one side of it. Popping the light out of the other side of it. Yeah. It's like a pad of the foot there. And I'm not gonna get too, too caught up in the foot. That's another one where if I want to spend some time, you know, in a longer drawing session, maybe I probably would want to come in here and, and flesh that foot out entirely. If 
For now, I'm just going to catch the major stuff. Seems to darken through here a little bit. Definitely rounds down into shadow underneath. And I'm going to smooth this area out with some vine charcoal just so we can see. We've got about seven minutes left. Uh, I'm going to take some of the texture out of this with some vine charcoal. Uh, and it'll darken the core shadow as well. Vine charcoal is very susceptible to being smoothed with your fingers or blending stump. And your blending stump might actually erase your charcoal a little bit. Your vine charcoal. Heck, it might do it to your compressed charcoal if it's a clean enough blending stump. I'm going to bring the silhouette of this front leg back just a little bit. All right. I'm going to start with this in the core shadow, just chase away some of that white paper texture. this silhouette back just a little bit as well. So here I'm kind of describing the background with the eraser. Bringing back a, a somewhat clean edge over here. Try and reclaim this edge between the chest muscles. I'm going to add just a little bit more definition through here. This is that serratus anterior.
And I think I might clean up a little bit of this front silhouette as well. just to give us a little clearer picture of the silhouette. Some vine charcoal in this shadow will help blast the thing out into nothing. Might as well add some here as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and call it there. It is 11.30, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the Zoom session. Remember, there's an open Zoom session, not mandatory, but if you have any questions or concerns or anything about due dates or anything else, um, come to that Zoom session. It's open Monday through Thursday every day. I will catch you next time. So you've got two potential ones to work from, whichever one strikes your fancy better, uh, but that's gonna be due Sunday. Remember about the critique portion of that. Um, also remember about gestures coming up as well. All right, basically keep an eye on Canvas for due dates. They're all they're all going to be there. Um, all right, I will see you in the Zoom session if you come. <laughs>